Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Crew Travel right here on the Audio International Radio. My name is Ria. I am your host, and I'm very pleased to welcome back my co-host, Gregarious Lee Harris. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good. Thank you. Uh, and I quite like gregarious. It's a good word. I, 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 do I know what it means? I don't know. Probably, <laughs> probably not, to be honest with you. But I, Look, I thought, did, I thought at least this week this would be one that you actually knew. You, look, Ria, we've known each other for 18 months. You know, <laughs> I deep down, I'm a simpleton. Let, let, let's not beat around the bush. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, next week I'll try and find something more simple. Um, like <laughs> <laughs> and I have to mention that Crew Travel is brought to you weekly by Blue Marine Travel, who haven't lost a passenger since Lee Harris was born back in the late 1900s, which is a good thing. Very good thing. Yes. So this week has been a bit of a cluster beep, straight across the planet, which um, is, is a bit unfortunate because we have had quite a few weeks of some great news. Uh, but this week, you have been kept extremely busy keeping on top of the changes, and the changes haven't been all that good. Um, let's head over to South Africa. What's going on there? Yeah, so the big news this week, uh, and unfortunately, like you say, it's not good news at all, uh, is that of the new Omicron variant of COVID being discovered in South African countries. Uh, with this news came the decision by many countries, including the US, the UK, Canada and the EU bloc, uh, to ban travellers who have been in South Africa and the other five South African countries from entry. Uh, what we do know is that the USA, as from Monday the 29th of November, uh, when their ban kicks in, will revert to the old proclamation they had previously, uh, thus meaning crew from South Africa with a C1D visa will still be able to enter. Uh, it's not a complete blanket ban. C1D visa holders can still enter. Uh, we've also had confirmation uh, this last uh, 24 hours uh, that the Netherlands will still accept ship's crew personnel to enter and transit the Netherlands from South Africa, uh, albeit with greater protocols to follow. Uh, those are a negative PCR test that is less than 24 hours old when going to board the flight and less than 48 hours old when arriving into the Netherlands or a negative PCR test that is less than 48 hours old before departure to the Netherlands, as well as a negative rapid test that is less than 24 hours old when boarding the flight. Uh, also, there will be a compulsory 10-day quarantine on arrival in the Netherlands, uh, reduced to five days if a negative test is obtained after five days via the GGD public health authorities in the Netherlands. Uh, as of the time of this interview, we're still trying to find out the rules and uh, restrictions for other European countries as well. Um, it's going to take us time. Uh, we're still trying to figure out exactly what it is and to get official confirmations from governments, uh, whether people can enter, what they'll need to enter. But as soon as we have that information, we'll bring it to you here first. Well, and of course, you know, as we're going to provide Lee's information, um, it's always posted up there. And of course, the Blue Marine website has every bit of information updated as and when. You know, it, it just sounds like what we were talking about, you know, eight months ago, 10 months ago. It's like we've taken a massive step backwards. And I feel really bad for the South African crew because, I, I mean, out of the world, as far as crew goes, they had the most difficult time getting themselves over to Europe or to the U.S. for the seasons. Um, and then all of a sudden there was this window. And I know personally quite a few people that managed to get to the Mediterranean in that window that they've just had um, and, and also to the States in order to find work. But once again, now everything's shut down. Like, you know, this, I, I feel bad for South African crew. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a nightmare. I'm not going to lie. Since Thursday, Friday, um, when the news broke with regards to the new variant, uh, the flights have just been pulled left, right and centre, you know, cancelled, no schedules uh, in place whatsoever. Another issue that's going to come up is, you know, we've said that the US, if you've got a C1D visa, you'll be allowed to enter uh, the Netherlands. Um, you know, you'll be allowed to enter, but with stricter um, protocols in place. The issue we're going to find probably for the next seven days is that's got to filter through to the check-in staff as well. So even though you're going to be eligible for flights, you may find yourself having issues at the airport that's when you need to make sure you've got your travel provider, you've got all your documentation to hand and you're ready to go. Um, but yeah, the reality is it's not an easy situation for South African crew at the moment. It's going to be tough um, for how long we don't know uh, until they find out exactly how transmissible and everything else is with this new variant. Um, but unfortunately, it is a South African crew that are going to be hit hard once again. 
Well, let me ask you this. Are they allowed to drink this time around while they're in South Africa? Let's hope so. I mean, I, I know from our very small lockdown we had here, alcohol was needed. Um, <laughs> so I know last I know last time that they did, the, the, the liquor shops and everywhere were shut. So fingers crossed, hopefully for the guys, they are allowed to have a drink or two. <laughs> that was the one thing that blew me away. It was like, wait a minute. So you're telling everybody they have to stay at home, but yet you can't even have a glass of wine with your dinner because you know it's like prohibition i mean I, I i don't know where where they were going with that you know you know on the other side it, you know there was quite a bit of violence brought on by alcohol in in domestic situations as a result of, of the lockdown etc um but yeah i don't know you know for normal people that drink normally and enjoy you know a glass or two or a day or something like that or on the weekend just weird just weird but Yep. Hey, queen of the world. We know it. <laughs> What's going on in New Zealand? Because, you know, this, this last time we spoke, they were looking to open up come near February time. Um, and this MIQ lottery, like ugh, the headaches that has caused. What's the news out of there? Yeah, uh, just quickly before I go into that, there is another MIQ uh, lottery this Tuesday for anybody who's interested. So just head to the MIQ uh, website and see if you get lucky, because uh, that's basically what it is. It is pure luck that, you know, I mean, I know crew that have been stuck away for God knows how long who have not had any joy with countless MIQ lottery. So there is one Tuesday. Get across to the website and see if you are lucky this time. But anyway, the, the, the breaking news this week is that fully vaccinated Kiwis and travellers will be able to bypass New Zealand's managed isolation at the border from early next year. Uh, COVID-19 Response Minister Chris Hipkins uh, announced a three-step approach that will allow fully vaccinated people to travel more freely in and out of New Zealand from next year. Now, the three, uh, the three phases uh, are as below. Uh, the phase one is from 11.59 p.m. on Sunday, January 16th. Uh, this is when fully vaccinated Kiwis and other eligible travellers can travel from Australia only uh, without needing to go through MIQ. Uh, instead, you can isolate at home for seven days. Uh, phase two kicks in from 11.59 p.m. on Sunday, February the 13th, 2022. Uh, this is when fully vaccinated Kiwis and other eligible travellers can travel to New Zealand from any other country in the world. Uh, and then phase three is from April the 30th, 2022 onwards, when all fully vaccinated individuals can travel to New Zealand. However, don't get too excited. There are still lots of rules and regulations come April the 30th, uh, even if you're fully vaccinated. Uh, in addition, what travellers will need to be able to enter New Zealand uh, is a negative pre-departure test, proof of full vaccination status, uh, a declaration confirming you have not been to any high-risk countries, uh, seven days in self-isolation still, so if you're coming on holiday, make sure it's a long holiday. Uh, and then you also need a final negative test before entering the community. Wow. Yeah. Travel is just not what it is. You know, if you're going to travel now, you've got to give yourself a month. You know, it, otherwise it's just not even worth it. Yeah, I mean, exactly right. Seven day self-isolation. You know, if you're going on a two week holiday, I mean, it's almost pointless, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I, it's funny because the days I remember, you know, jumping on a plane on Friday after work, heading to Las Vegas, spending the weekend on Las Vegas Sunday afternoon, you pop home, you're ready for work Monday morning. Um, <clears throat> that's just not possible anymore. You know, you can't just, oh, let's just take a jaunt for the weekend. No, that you know, you've got to have at least a week to quarantine before you can do your jaunt because you're going to be stuck in a hotel room somewhere. It's exactly right. Yeah, you can't go right on the flip side. We'll just go tomorrow. Uh, no, because then you've got to get your PCR test. Then you've got to get this. You've got all the rest of it. So you've got you've got about a two week build up to your holiday. You get to your holiday. You've got to lock yourself away for seven days. Then you can have seven days of sun, and then you've got to come home and have another PCR test. It gives a completely <laughs> new meaning to what what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? Yeah, we yeah, went sorry. to Vegas for a week. We stayed in a hotel for a week. We didn't move. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the UK. What's going on there? 
Yeah, so all arrivals into the UK now will be required to take a PCR test and self-isolate until they have a negative result, uh, the Prime Minister announced. Uh, Boris Johnson announced the temporary measures, which will be reviewed in three weeks' time in a Downing Street briefing this past weekend in reaction to the two cases of the new variant being detected in the UK. Uh, the Prime Minister hasn't specified exactly when the PCR requirement will come into force, uh, but we're led to believe it will be from this Monday. Right, and France has made some changes. Yeah, so firstly, I wanted to say thank you to um, Sarah Futasar at Campra Nicholson's because she's the one who actually told me about this. I didn't, I hadn't seen it myself. Uh, so thanks so much, Sarah. Uh, this past week, French authorities have announced they are putting a seven month expiry date on their health pass. Uh, so from January 15th, anyone aged 18 and over will have a validity of seven months from the date they received their second dose of a COVID vaccine on the health app issued by France. Uh, if you want to continue using your health pass, you must have received a booster dose within seven months of your most recent COVID vaccine, or the pass will be deactivated. Uh, it was also further announced that users of the two anti-COVID app, uh, which is typically used to show the health passes in public spaces, will receive an alert when their health pass is close to expiring. Uh, basically, what will happen is the app's home screen will change colour to warn the users. Uh, when you get your booster shot, shot low, it's up to you to update the health pass. It won't do it automatically, unfortunately. Uh, you can do this by scanning the QR code on your vaccination booster certificate uh, in the same way as when you activated the original uh, app using your original uh, vaccine certificate. Okay, just, you know, this is another example, shining example of bureaucracy gone absolutely insane. If that app is smart enough to figure out that your booster needs to be done, how the flip and hard is that to just update it once it's done? I mean, it goes into the same damn computer system. Like, come on people, finish your job. Don't just start it. It's, it's just so frustrating for me. You know, I just, I sit here and I see the incompetence of these things and how much more difficult they make them. And, you know, it's so easy to fix. I mean, I couldn't do it, but you know, there's people that that's their job, right? <laughs> for the computer programmers, it's, it's a piece of, but for mere mortals like us, no, it's not. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, but <laughs> right. We're not even gonna go there. Um, Singapore Airlines. Yeah, so Singapore Airlines are adding more flights from Australia under the vaccine travel lane scheme. Uh, vaccinated passengers from Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth will be able to forego quarantine when arriving in the city state from early 2022. Uh, the VTL flights to Adelaide and Brisbane will commence on January the 15th uh, and Perth on March the 1st. Uh, yeah. On top of this, on Friday, Singapore also launched VTL schemes with Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, Fiji, Maldives, Sri Lanka and Turkey. Uh, this brings the total of countries with which Singapore has reopened for quarantine free travel to 27. Yeah, well, hang on to that for a week. We might see a change. <laughs> I was going to say next week I could be saying it down to one. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, we, we got to stop saying good news because the fact is the minute we say there's great news, a week later, yeah. we're like, life sucks. Crawl in a hole and die. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, pretty much so. <laughs> I mean, it's good, it's good news for this moment anyway. Yeah. I mean, by the, time, by the time this interview goes out, this could all be wrong. <laughs> well, look, all we're saying is if you're heading to or from Singapore, now's the time to do it because you've got a really short window. We're telling you here. Yeah. You heard it first here. <laughs> <laughs> Morocco. Uh, yeah, so Morocco have banned direct flights from France as COVID cases increase across the continent. Uh, France is only the latest in a series of flight bans that have seen much of Western Europe uh, cut off from the North African nation. Uh, effective 11.59pm uh, on November the 26th, just gone, uh, Morocco banned all direct flights from France. Uh, the country is tightening the restrictions in response to the rise in the COVID cases. Uh, and they're basically hoping to prevent imported cases coming in. Uh, we received the news uh, and it was confirmed by all airlines flying between the two countries, uh, including the national carrier Royal Air Maroc. Um, just to reiterate to people as well, it's not just France who are being singled out by Moroccan authorities. Uh, already uh, back in October, Russia were banned from entering uh, on direct flights into Morocco. Uh, also Germany, the Netherlands and the UK have also been added to the list. 
I think they just added France to the list because of that whole COVID passport thing. They just thought you guys are being ridiculous. So forget you. That's really what happened. <laughs> It's like, yeah, our computer program has been doing it in Morocco. I don't know what yours can. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. And this week we had crew questions, but you didn't have time to answer them because you've been running all over Hell's Half Acre trying to figure out what's going on with, you know, today to tomorrow to this afternoon to an hour from yeah, now. Exactly right. I do apologize to anybody who's, uh, who's written in. Uh, I will get to them. I, I swear I'll get to them and I will answer them all. Um, but yeah, uh, this, this uh, especially since Thursday, since the uh, Omicron variant came in, it's basically been all hands uh, on deck. And yeah, I've just not had a chance to look at them. But I will do. I promise everybody I will do. Right. Well, you won't see it on here because we're not going to talk about it next week because it's going to be a whole different ball game by then. But <laughs> Lee will get back to you personally. So I will um, do indeed. look for that in your inbox um, or yeah, <laughs> you email them, right? Email. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah email. Some, some, some may pick up the phone, but most are emails. Yeah. Perfect. I wouldn't pick up the phone. You use a phone? Sometimes. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, it's nice. It's nice to talk to people now and again. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well you talk to me every week well yeah but you pay me <laughs> <laughs> you should pay me <laughs> <laughs> right Lee it has been an absolute pleasure um, I have to mention again that Clue Travel is brought to you weekly by Blue Marine Travel who haven't lost a passenger since Lee Harris was born um, back in the 90s the 1990s the late back in the 1990s <laughs> 1990s. Oh, I wish I've aged badly. If I'm the 1990s, <laughs> very badly. <laughs> and we will make sure to provide uh, any of the links, the MAQ link, all of those things that will be on Blue Marine's website. Um, and we will make sure to provide that link as well as if you are looking to travel anytime in the near future. And I say this every single week. We will provide Lee's LinkedIn link if it's happening in the world of travel. Lee is on top of it and posting it. Where do you find time to work? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, well, I fit it in now and again. Because <laughs> I'm like, you know, I watch what you do on LinkedIn and I'm like, well, okay. and it's 24 hours a day. Like, I, I wonder where you find time because you're a parent as well. So I'm like, where's the working hours? Where's the sleeping hours? And where's the parenting hours? Because it is a constant stream and it's up to date information. So that is not pre pro, you know, like a lot of people on social media, everything is pre programmed. It's like fires off. But no, this is stuff as it's happening. So you must live in front of LinkedIn. Yeah, I've just got my three kids, basically, really my my four year old, my eight year old and my 14 year old. They're all on they're all on travel, looking and seeing what's happening. I'm getting them to post it, really. <laughs> no, That's I, I, smart. I'm I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really. <laughs> Child labor. You know what? I never knew. I never understood why they got rid of the chimney sweep. I really did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm a parent. <laughs> All right. Anyways, Lee, it has been a pleasure as always. And a good laugh on a Sunday morning because we do record this on a Sunday morning for me. Um, and the end of the, the day for you, the beginning of your week. Yeah, it is. Yes, I was so now 20 to 10 in the evening on a Sunday. So it's a perfect way to finish the week. I know. I know. A lot of people say that. Nobody says that. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us once again. You have been watching another edition of Crew Travel right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I have been your host. We'll see you again next week. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we're boarding passengers seated in zones E and F. At the